Hi. Now, what we have here is a question on coordinate geometry, which you might like to try. If so, just pause the video, come back when ready, and I'll do the work solution, and you can compare your solutions to mine. OK, so what we have is two lines. The line L1, which has equation y equals minus 2x plus 3. And we've got another line, L2, which is perpendicular to L1 and passes through the points 5, 6. And in the first part, part A, we've got to find an equation for the line L2 in the form AX plus BY plus C equals 0, where A, B and C are integers. Well, let's just do that part first. So whenever I get a coordinate geometry question, what I would always generally suggest you do is draw a sketch. A sketch graph. So what I'm going to do is we'll have this then as our y-axis. And we need an x-axis, which we'll just have going through here. And there's our x-axis. Now we've got our line L1, which has equation y equals minus 2x plus 3. So the gradient is minus 2, and that means it's going to slope downwards. And also, when x is 0, y would be equal to 3. So in other words, it will cross the y-axis at 3. So if we draw that line in, say, say it looks something like this, OK? So this point here is going to be 3. And that's our line L1. So if we just put that in there as L1. Next we've got this line L2, which is perpendicular to L1. And it passes through the point 5, 6. Well, let's assume that the point 5, 6 is, say, 5 across and 6 up. Let's say it's about here. And so we'll mark that in as 5, 6. Now we've got our line L2 then, which is perpendicular to L1. So it looks, just from this sketch, that it's going to be something like that, OK? We'll label that as well, L2. So how am I going to get the equation of L2? Well, I'm going to use the form of a straight line, which is y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1, rather than y equals mx plus c. This is much more convenient to use for something like this, because x1, y1 is a point on the line, and that's going to be 5, 6. x1 will be 5, and y1 will be 6. And m, the gradient, well, it's going to be perpendicular to this gradient. And that's really our starting point in this question, trying to determine the gradient of L1. So if we start here then with part A, we've got for L1, its equation then is y equals minus 2x plus 3. And from this, the gradient then is minus 2. Let's just write this in, that it follows that the gradient okay, of L1 equals minus 2. And that means that a perpendicular gradient is always the negative reciprocal of a gradient. You should be familiar with that okay, rule. So therefore, the gradient of L2 okay, is going to be the negative reciprocal. So we just switch the sign. That will be plus, And that will mean it's 1 over 2. The product of perpendicular gradients, if you multiply them together, in other words, always should give negative 1. Now, that means that we're in a position then to get the equation of L2. So therefore, let's just write a short intro. Therefore, the equation of L2. I always believe in intros rather than just writing statements down. Okay. The equation of L2 is y minus y1, so y1 is the 6, equals m, the gradient, which we've seen is a half, multiplied by x minus x1, x1 being the 5. 
Now we need to put it in this format. So we've got a fraction here. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by two. So we're going to have two times the y, first of all. So we therefore have two y. And then two times the minus six is going to be minus 12. And this is all one term here. So if we times it by two, this is going to be just simply one. And one times x minus five is just going to give us x minus five. Now, we've got a positive x here, so I want to subtract 2y from both sides and add 12 to both sides. And that will give us the final form, x and then minus 2y. And if I add 12 to both sides, 12 minus 5 is going to be plus 7. And that's going to equal 0. So you can see it's in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. a would be 1 b would be minus 2 and c would be 7. They're all integers. Okay, so that's part A. So next we just need to come down here and we'll look at doing part B. Now in part B, let's just put that there. Now for part B it says that the line L2 crosses the x-axis at the point A. So this would be the point A here. Let's just mark that in as A. And the y-axis at the point B. So we'll just say that that's B there. And we've got to find the x-coordinate of A and the y-coordinate of B. So how do I get A first of all? Well, for A, that is where y equals 0. So when y equals 0, we substitute that into our equation for the line L2. So that is going to be this equation here. And when y equals 0, you're just going to have x plus 7 equals 0. So it follows that x plus 7 equals 0. And if I subtract 7 from both sides, we therefore have x equals minus 7. OK, so we've got the x-coordinate for A. Now we need the y-coordinate for B. And the y-coordinate for B will be when x is set equal to 0. So for B, we just need to say when x equals 0. And when x equals 0, it follows that we would have minus 2y plus 7 equals 0. So minus 2y plus 7 would equal 0. And if I rearrange this, subtract 7 from both sides, I'd have minus 2y equals minus 7. And then divide by minus 2. Minus 7 divided by minus 2 is going to be a positive value. y equals 7 over 2, or 3.5. So it is just above the point here at 3. OK, so we've got our x-coordinate for A and our y-coordinate for the point B. Now in part C, it says find the area of the triangle OAB, given that O is the origin. So we just put that in there. So OAB. Now, if we're looking then for the area of the triangle, being a right-angle triangle, uh, just right here, at area OAB, equals being a triangle it's going to be half the base and I'm going to take the base as the distance AO. Now the coordinate, the x coordinate for A is minus 7. So therefore the length here is going to be 7 units. And as for the height that would be the length OB and that is 7 over 2 units. So We'll do that. So we've got the area of the, the triangle OAB is a half times 7 times 7 over 2. And that's going to be 7 7s are 49 over 2 2s are 4. So it's going to be 49 over 4. And we better write units squared. Not that you have to, but it is an area and I kind of like to finish it off like that. OK, so it's a bit cramped at the end here, but I hope you can see how I approach this problem. And if you got it right, well done.